I am installing the Ultimate Atari Video Mod into an Atari 7800, today on Arctic Lab Services. The Ultimate Atari Video, or UAV, is a mod board that produces great quality composite and is video at a great price. The best part of the UAV mod is that you don't have to remove any components, plus it doesn't affect the original RF connection. Combined with my prototype No Drilling AV Mount it can all be removed to put the Atari 7800 back to stock. You can find links to the Brewing Academy and the eBay affiliate links in the description below. If you need help taking apart the Atari 7800, you can click the card up in the corner. This is the basic UAV. Other add-on options are available depending on which Atari system you have, but the add-ons are not needed. Let's take a closer look. This is the top of the UAV. On the right are the outputs. Composite Ground, Composite Video, Luma or Luminance, Chroma, or chrominance, and the ground for chroma and luma. At the other end are the inputs, sync, loom 1, loom 2, loom 3, loom 0, color in from the Maria chip, and T-Call, which is TIA color from the TIA chip. We also have 5 volt and ground needed to power the UAV. Now that we know what is needed, let's find out where to get it. All of the inputs needed can be found in this area. Let's get in there and see what's going on. This is what they call a resistor ladder. Starting on the left, we can find sync, loom 1, loom 2, loom 3. We skip the fifth resistor, then we have loom 0, color in, and lastly, T-call. All the solder points are at the bottom of these resistors. And over to the far left, we find the RF module. There we have 5 volts and ground. We will be soldering to the other side of these pins. Now that we know where the inputs are coming from, we need to figure out where we're going to mount the UAV. The best place in my opinion is the place closest to the inputs, so I'm going to install it here. Yet again, let's take a closer look. The 5 volts in ground are literally right next to the UAV. They won't be crossed like this. I'll show you exactly how I solder those on in a minute. I will be using a ribbon cable to install the UAV. First we have our sink, then loom 1, loom 2, loom 3, loom 0, then all the way over here for color in, then the T-call. If you noticed, everything is parallel except for the sync and loom 1. Those get crossed. This is my UAV with the inputs done with ribbon cable. My close-up camera isn't the best, but I hope you can see what I did. All the wires are in line except for the sync and loom 1. They cross over each other. I like to add connectors whenever I can. It makes disassembly and troubleshooting a lot easier. These are simple and cheap pin headers. I'm going to solder the pins into the UAV and the composite and S-video wire to the headers. So all I have to do for assembly is just plug it in. Now that the video input wires are soldered in, let's mount the UAV. The back of the UAV is not flat, so I'm using 3M 1mm thick double-sided tape. I lay one piece down on the flat part of the UAV, then a larger piece over the whole thing. This makes it flat. After removing the backing, it's time to stick it down. Make sure that it is all the way down to the main board and flush to the back of the RF module. Then press it down firmly. It's not going anywhere. The next thing we're going to do is solder in the 5 volt and ground wires. The 5 volt is going to come over and down to the first pin on the RF module. The ground is going to come over then down to the last pin on the RF module. It should look something like this. Next we are going to get the alignment for the rest of the inputs. Bring the ribbon cable around the end of the RF module and line it up with the bottom legs of the resistor ladder. I'm making a mark on the ribbon cable right above the corresponding resistor. Remember to skip the fifth resistor. This is where I'm going to cut the cable. This is where it's going to bend. Starting at the sink wire, I strip it off of the ribbon to the point that I marked. Bend it down and then trimmed, tinned, and soldered it to the resistor. This is the entire UAV installed. No video is complete without audio. All that is required are three components to make a small circuit. A 10 microfarad capacitor to filter the audio, one 18K resistor, and one 6.8K resistor. This is where we get our audio from. Let's dive in. These are the two resistors we are going to solder our small circuit to. One is 18K and the other is 6.8K. To make our small circuit, put two legs together, then add the positive leg of the capacitor, and solder it all together. It should look something like this. 
Then solder the matching resistors from our circuit to the bottom legs of the resistors on the mainboard. I put some heat shrink tubing on the assembly to keep it from shorting out. The negative leg of the resistor is our audio out. I connected it to the header and super glued it to the side of the RF module. I got the audio ground from the common ground on the base of the RF module. While we're here, I wanted to show you that I had to angle the pins to get a better clearance from the shell. Speaking of shells, it's time to mount the AV jacks. I'm not going to be drilling any holes into my case. If you would like me to show you how to drill holes in the case in a separate video, let me know in the comments below. I designed an alternative method. This is my no drilling AV bracket mount. I created it in Tinkercad, then 3D printed it. It's not perfect, but it's close enough to the correct angles to mount it flush to the shell. It has screw holes to mount my S-Video port. The holes for the RCAs are a bit snug, but they work. But before I mount the bracket, let's solder the wires onto the S-Video port. This is the S-Video port that I am using. The outer ring is ground, so are these two pins. But these two are separate from each other. But the UAV uses a common ground, so they can all be soldered together. This pin is chroma, it's the color signal. And this pin is luma, it's the brightness signal. This is the whole thing wired up. This video has luma, chroma, and ground, composite and ground, then shared audio and shared ground. Everything is mounted and ready for the next step. Don't pay attention to the horrible paint job. I was in a hurry. I'm going to be mounting it on the bottom shell in this location here. All you have to do is feed the ribbon cable into the vents and it goes right into place. Looks pretty good. Minus the paint job. Before I mount it, we need to measure the ribbon cable. The cable is going to lay flat across here and come up to the side here. I then take the main board with the bottom RF shield installed and set it into place. You have to make sure to give yourself just enough slack to connect the wires. Any extra slack can go down the side. The audio wire is just about right. I'm going to trim it a little to allow for the pin header. The video wires can be trimmed here to allow enough room for the header. I have to take it apart to trim, tin, and solder all the connectors. This is what it looks like when I'm done. I have 3M double-sided tape all the way around the bracket. The connectors turned out pretty good. I put marks on them to show which way is up. I broke one of the vents trying to squeeze the header through. It can always be glued in later. It's far better than big holes in the shell. Make sure you have the bracket faced in the right direction and feed the ribbon cable through the vent. Line it up and get a visual of where it's going. Then take off the adhesive backing. Gently put it in place making sure it's where you want it. After double checking, firmly press it down. Looks great. Except for the paint job. It's time to finish it up. Laying the ribbon cable flat, I put the main board with RF shield into place. I lift up a little on the main board and hook everything up. After making sure everything is in place and no wires are showing, I put the top on and screw it together. And that's it. I am using a cheap $10 video capture device to capture gameplay. This does not do it justice. I have heard some people say that the UAV does not play nice with some capture devices and some newer HD TVs. When I hook it up to my CRT TV, the picture is super sharp and well worth the effort. Thanks for watching.